Hello students. In this video, we are going to see chapter 10 gravitation from 9th class NCRT textbook. Now, the moment you hear the word gravitation or if you are asked what is gravitation, I am sure what would be your answer. You would say it is a force with which earth attracts a body towards itself. But dear students, it is wrong because that is gravity. It is not gravitation. We'll see the difference between gravitation and gravity soon. Before that, let us see what is gravitation. Actually, gravitation is the phenomenon of attraction between any two objects in universe due to their masses. I hope you remember, you must have heard that uh, when Newton was sitting under a tree, an apple had fallen down on his head. Okay, and from that, since from that only he discovered gravitation. So, gravitation is discovered by Newton. Gravitation or gravitational force is the word that can be used for the force of attraction between any two bodies of the universe due to their masses. Now, when we talk about any body, whether it is very small or very big, Okay, irrespective of its shape and size, it has some mass. When a body exists, it has some mass. And when body has mass, means it exerts gravitational force and it experiences gravitational force by all the bodies which are in the surroundings. So, this gravitational force is exists between any two bodies in the universe. No body is there without experiencing or without exerting this gravitational force. Now, in the higher classes, you will study that there are four basic forces in nature. We will not go in detail, just have written the name here. Strong nuclear force, weak nuclear force, electromagnetic force and gravitational force. So, there are four basic forces in nature. As the name suggests, the first two forces exist between the nucleons, particles which are present in the nucleus of an atom. Okay, and electromagnetic force is the force between the charges. Gravitational force, as I have explained you now, it is, exists between any two bodies. Okay, so out of these four forces, gravitational force is the weakest force in nature. Remember that. It is not a very strong force. As you must have observed, when you look into your surroundings, you never feel this force exists. Because you don't see collision between two bodies in the surroundings. You don't see collision between yourself and any other object in your surroundings. So you feel that this force does not exist. But my dear students, this force does exist. But the only thing is, it is a very, very weak force. And hence, we don't feel the attraction by the other objects in the surroundings. And we don't feel that we are attracting other objects in the surroundings. Now, the measurement of this gravitational force is given by Newton's universal law of gravitation. Let us see first the statement of this law. Every body in the universe attracts every other body with a force which is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Okay, so according to this law, every body in the universe attracts every other body with some force. And that force is directly proportional to the product of their masses. Why I am stressing on product? Because usually students forget this word product and they directly write that this force is directly proportional to the masses. Then it won't be correct. And inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Again, this square word students generally forget and the statement goes wrong. Okay, so every body in the universe attracts every other body with a force which is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. I hope you have understood the statement. Okay, now let us see how to express this met force in mathematical form. So, we'll consider two bodies A and B having masses M1, M2 say let R be the distance between them or their centers. So, consider two bodies A and B having masses M1 and M2. Let R be the distance between their centers and F be the gravitational force of attraction between them. 
Then according to Newton's law of gravitation, as we have the statement here, F is proportional to product of their masses. It means F is proportional to M1 into M2. Number it as 1. F is inversely proportional to R square. Inversely means it is directly proportional to 1 upon R square. Okay. So inversely proportional to R square we have written here. This is numbered as 2. So from 1 and 2 or combining 1 and 2 we can write F is proportional to M1 M2 divided by R square. As we have seen in the previous chapter that whenever we change this proportionality sign into equality sign, we always multiply with a right hand side usually with a constant. We can multiply on either side, any side we can multiply, but we will be multiplying here right hand side with a constant of proportionality. Generally, the constant of proportionality is denoted by small letter k as we have done for f is equal to ma derivation. But in this case, this symbol is given, this is a special symbol used for constant of proportionality here, capital G. So F is capital G M1 M2 over R square, but then you are required to mention here, introduce G here, where G is a constant of proportionality called as universal gravitational constant. And its value was found by Henry Cavendish. Uh, so G is equal to 6.67 into 10 raised to minus 11 Newton meter square per kg square. Now students, this law, I hope you have understood the statement of this law and now you can express it in mathematical form. So final relation is F is capital G M1 M2 over R square. Now, this law is called as, there you, you know, you can be asked question why this law is called as universal law of gravitation. This is because this law is valid for all the bodies in the universe, irrespective of their size, shape, intervening medium. It means medium in which the bodies are present. Let it be air, water, oil, anything. So irrespective of their shape, size, mass, intervening medium or irrespective of presence of the other bodies in the surroundings, this force always exists between two any two bodies in the universe. Okay, so that's why it is called as universal law of gravitation. Now, next small question which can be formed from indirect question that can be formed, formed here is why this constant is called as universal gravitational constant. Again, the reasoning will be same that G value is constant for all the bodies, any two bodies in the universe irrespective of their shape, size, mass and the intervening medium. Okay, so I hope you have, you are able to now state the law and express it in mathematical form and answer to the question related, which are indirectly related to this topic. Now, this capital G, how the units are Newton meter square per kg square, how its units are these, let us see. Now here I have written the mathematical form of Newton's this gravitational force from Newton's universal law of gravitation F is equal to capital G M1 M2 over R square. Let us rewrite this equation by taking capital G as a subject. So capital G is equal to F into R square divided by M1 into M2. We have taken this M1, M2 and R square on the other side. So we have to multiply F by R square and divide this by M1 into M2. Now from this we can easily see that the unit of G, R, unit of G, what is the unit of SI unit of G? F force Newton. R is a distance, meter square per mass is has a unit kilogram kg kg square so newton meter square per kg square is the si unit of capital g universal gravitational constant we can either write like this or we can write like this i have seen some students are there you know they do the mistake they put the oblique sign okay and they also put this minus two they put both the things together so it goes wrong then so take care Either write per kg square or don't write per, write kg raised to minus 2. So that is per kg square only. Okay. Now, so you have seen here how to get the unit of capital G. 
Let us see if we can define G in terms of F. To get the definition for G, what we'll do is, in this equation, we'll consider that the two bodies are each is having mass 1 kg. So let M1 and M2 both be equal to 1 kg. Let R be 1 meter. R is the distance between the two bodies. So two bodies each is having mass 1 kg and R which is the distance between the centers is 1 meter. So if I put these values in this formula, M1, M2 as 1. So 1 square divided by R square. Again it is 1 into 1. So capital G is equal to 1 into 1 square upon 1 into 1. So we get that capital G is equal to F into 1 which is F. So G is equal to F. It does not mean that G is a force. Here we will only mention that if the two bodies are separated by 1 meter distance, it means the distance between their centers is 1 meter and each is having mass 1 kg, then the force of attraction between, gravitational force of attraction between them will have the same value that we have mentioned earlier, G. In fact, G value is, I am saying it the other way around, G value was found this way, okay? So, universal gravitational constant can be now defined as we, can, we know it is a proportionality constant. We can say that universal gravitational constant is numerically equal to the force of attraction between two bodies each having unit mass. Unit mass means 1 kg and whose centers are separated by unit distance that is 1 meter. Remember that we have written numerically equal to. These two are totally different types of physical quantities. This is just a constant of proportionality. It is a scalar quantity and this is a force which is a vector quantity. Okay. So just their values are equal when M1, M2 is 1 kg and R is 1 meter. So this is what all you can know extra about G. You should know how to get the units. You should know how you can uh, get its value in terms of F. I hope this topic is clear to you and you will remember now the questions like define, you are able to answer to the questions, define gravitation, gravitational force, state Newton's universal law of gravitation and express it in mathematical form. Why this law is called as universal law of gravitation? Why the constant of proportionality capital G is called as universal gravitational constant? I hope this video is clear to you. We will continue with this topic in our next video. Thank you students.